Welcome back dear friends. What a time we've been having. I haven't spoken to you for ages and ages and ages because I've been working on getting the instructions done for the reciprocating chronometer as many of you will have noticed. Thanks very much for your kind comments. And yesterday I finished editing together the final instructions number eight. Video eight. And today Look at the state of this. Would you Adam and Eve it? You may have noticed, I was more observant of you, in number of instructions, after I'd stuck the small gem in, quote unquote, every photo after that had this horrible um, super glue white mist around it. Because I, it's very difficult when you're filming with a camera and you've got the camera set on a 10 second delay and then you're trying to set up the position of the shot and then it photographs it and then the super glue splurts all over the place. So, to cut a long story short, here's the lovely finished clock which I'm thrilled to bits with. I had to in the end, I'm so glad I built the final one and photographed it and having planned it so carefully, copious notes, um, because I had to make several changes. For example, the AM PM thing indicator on the previous one I'd made, which I thought I'd got completely sorted out, I'd forgotten I'd had to sand off a little bit of this counterweight because it was hitting the corner, so I was happily, merrily taking lots of photographs and setting each one up, and all right, we've now made that, now we glue this on, then we put that on, then we spin, what? It doesn't spin. Things like that. So it meant um, changing the design of this, which I'd forgotten to do last time, and making another one and luckily it looks so similar to the previous one because that's always the danger when you're doing uh, instruction videos if you suddenly find you have to change something dramatically you have to go back and change every other photo oh, bleh. luckily not the case here because i just had to angle the dangle of that slightly lower so it didn't bang into that and i didn't have to sand it so that's a joy what else did i change oh yes to change the 3D printing design of these spacers because they were just too tight for the M3 screws. That was another one. And the offending item, I realised that because this is printed that way up on the 3D printer, it was having a it bulged out. If you look at the video again, you the instructions, you can probably see that it bulges out, and the cars have to fit the hour hand. Oh, the other hand has to push onto the back of it. It snapped. I thought, oh no, it's fine, it's all set up properly. I'll just push that on it, but it snapped. I thought, well, I've got to do something about that. So I redesigned this with an inverted cone shape to subtract so it actually gets narrower. This is actually the original which I just filed off because I was starting to tear my hair out and wanted the the instruction to be finished um, and then resprayed but the new super improved version has a cone shape and is absolutely fine so I need to get this hideous gem out the great thing about having the, um, the steel shaft inside is that oh, look at that it's nice and reflective pretty is you just do this look at that I hadn't stuck it in that well because I saw I missed it all and stuff because I was concentrating too much. Now what I'm going to do with a bit of wet and dry is to sand this down to get it absolutely perfect because I want the final photographs of this to be spot on. And ever since this went wrong, obviously every time I took any photographs of the instructions, all I could ever see was the mist around that. I wouldn't notice anything else beautiful about it, just that. So I will get on with that. I'm going to do that with my trusty wet and dry, my trusty water. And then I'll get back to you. It is so nice working off script. Don't know whether that's the word, phrase, but it is great. I have got all these. There's the original notes. I know these were the new notes written on the printed ones when I realised I've missed bits out of it. And I'm just having to recite it all and work so precisely. And then editing it together, getting it all following the same pattern. Whereas now, I can say what I like. I can film a chair if I want. How very exciting. The creativity is coming back to me. Right, I'll get on with this and stop talking and get back to you shortly. You want a top tip? I hear you cry because you haven't had any for ages. Here's one. 
I want, well, I have sanded this lovely and smooth, but it's got a chain on it. I don't want to spray the chain brass because it's already brass. And it's got a weight made of brass, which I don't want to spray brass. If you get one of these, you can still have used this before. For this purpose, one of these grip bags, grip seal bags, you can go to a slight distance, in fact, down to there. You can put everything you don't want painted in it and seal it up around the pit and then voila in fact voila it works really well and it's really simple because the alternative is to use copious amounts of masking tape and this and that and the other and it just takes forever whereas this way is really quick and simple it's perfect one of those nah. Hold on a minute. Need to count away. That'll do for the first coat. It's only just to cover up the uh, pieces of sanded anyway. But there's more. Look. These are actually. The clock movements I need for the uh, reciprocating chronograph and of course the ones I've got at the moment for the chronograph are ones with pendulums on that won't fit and ones with the trigger movement on that cost a lot more and aren't quite the right size so I've had to place a new order luckily I've got a lot of the pendulum ones left still about 50 or 60 but I've run out of the ones for the net net throb well and I haven't got any of these so I'm going to make up two or three kits using the available bits I've got because I want to get send them out to people, get people to make them up and let me know if there are any issues, problems or unforeseen circumstances that I need to correct. Fingers crossed, hopefully not. Um, but I have got a hundred of each, a hundred of these and a hundred of the trigger ones arriving. I think they're coming next week. So that's great. What I must do is sit down at the computer and start reordering parts for the net net thrub wells which will be run out of and also um, sort out and order all the parts for the reciprocating chronograph. The fun never stops or stop when the fun stops as they say in betting circles. Oh, I've got to mention this again. I just love waking up in the night and thinking horns. Oh no I've got to try and locate some more but look I know I've mentioned them before, a hundred black horns which the paint covers really nicely, a hundred of these directly from the company, I am absolutely thrilled to have them, it was always such a worry, I never knew whether I was even going to be able to make any more net net troubles, because I may not have been able to find anywhere that was selling these horns with the pandemic and the lack of football matches, and the need to annoy people by blowing horns in their ears. And I even took the precaution of getting a load more of the electric pumps. And there's five in each of these packets, the air pumps. Because again, that was the other part of this, that, that throb well, which I was never quite certain I was going to be able to get. Sometimes you could get them on Amazon, sometimes they wouldn't have any in stock and you'd have to wait six weeks while they came from abroad. So I thought I'd just order 50 of them as it happens. So that's good as well. Only the other 128 parts to locate, order and stock take. The battery just went flat two days ago which has now been recharged, thank you very much. I was about to say how much effort goes into doing these instructions. Don't get me wrong, I do like doing instructions, but if you remember, I don't know, a few videos back, said I'd come up with, I think it was 5,700 words or something for all the instructions, which I dutifully typed up from my hideous notes. And now I find, because it's the first time I've done this in a more grown up and professional way, I think, um, I find I have to annotate them. Because reading through my lovely printed out script, I keep coming up with all sorts of things. If you, I mean, right down to, look, there's pages of it with these extra additions but so be it now what I've just done this morning is to get the uh, the painting part of the instruction video done 
So this is not a very long one, I hasten to add, because it's only just two sides. I've added all sorts of extra bits and pieces as I've gone back to it and thought about it. Anywho, I've done that. I thought I'd just go through the next part of the process with you. The next part of the process is to use this lovely little Eddie Roll sound recorder, which I bought years ago. Works really nicely to sit here in a nice quiet room um, and read the uh, instructions, read each bit. And I've learnt from experience to start it recording to wait say three or four seconds then to read the line or the section wait three or four seconds and then press stop so that I've got plenty of room to cut out any clicks or and keep hiss going because this does produce quite a lot of hiss at least you don't notice it on the computer when you've got it on speakers but if you've got headphones on like I use when I'm editing you really do notice the hiss and you really notice it when it suddenly stops when the audio files run out so that's what I've learnt takes longer but it's well worth doing. Then we bring all this and the camera over to the computer. Here's the one I prepared earlier. This is the number four. I put all the audio files from the Edirol thing in there in a folder and then I put all of the photos and videos and other bits and pieces here and then I open the software now I'm using um, Pinnacle Studio 17 which is quite old-fashioned they've got lots lots of separate new versions but what I find is nowadays the way of the world and all that is that every time you get a new version they've stopped something else working we've been using Pinnacle for years since we first started video editing holiday things ages ago and every subsequent thing, they, they tell you in the instructions it works, and it doesn't. Lots of people I know don't like Pinnacle at all. I like it because I paid for it and I actually own it. Well, I don't. I've owned the rights to it or be using it. So it's not, I don't have to pay a monthly fee, which is obviously the latest scam. Things that they stopped it doing, for example, are you can't right click and shift and select a load of different frames or clips and then apply an effect to them or change the volume you have to do every single one separately it's really silly but that software companies for you anyway the idea is that along the bottom there's a collection of all the bits and pieces there there's the preview screen and here's um, I, you can add as many tracks or as few tracks as you want up to about six or seven again that's another limitation in this one, I have decided to have music along the bottom, a uh, title background here that looks nice. It's, it's basically this twiddly bit in the background. And titles video on this track. And then on the top one, my narrative going along. You can see how I've cut all the, and trimmed all the clips, the narrative bits, the audio files, so that there's no gaps right to the extent, and I do apologise if this is all wobbly, but of adding, sometimes up to adding just a bit of hiss, an empty audio track, otherwise it really does notice. So I start off by working to the narrative basically, the narration, start dropping the narration clips on here, and for each one then adding the, the corresponding video or image, and then adding a fade by dragging a little tab over which is useful so that because hard cuts just don't look like right when you're doing lots of um, cutting of photos that are panning and zooming and then I add a pan and a zoom and then gradually work all the way through adding titles as I go so for example this one assembling the gem panel and then that's a little section for that and finally ending up which I'm pleased I've done this time. You see how much goes into it. Focus! Here we are, an end view on a lovely turntable of the bits that you hopefully have constructed successfully during this video. Um, with a nice little bit of music underneath somewhere. The music's nice, it's called Cat Run. It's um, pinnacle, this version anyway, comes with a version of Sonic Pro or something, I can't remember what it's called, but it automatically 
composes it you tell it how long you want it and you can even once you've plonked it onto the timeline you can drag it out and it'll recompose it to last exactly the right amount of time and it's got several different things in fact i'll show you there's a little button over here you click on that obviously it comes up with a huge look at me i'm opening which is really frustrating when you've got headphones on and then you get the dialogue screen own titles obviously I had to buy this one because the free ones are absolutely rubbish but there we are cat run it's called and then so I want it nine seconds long I can then play it isn't that amazing so I want it four seconds long fabulous I'm I mean, it is so clever, it really is, and it does make using, adding music to think videos like this much, much more easy than having to trim down, load up, you know, whole tunes, audio files. So, that's it, and then once I've got, I'm happy with it all, and I've watched it all and everything, for example, this end bit, and click play. Now push the two parts together and hold them whilst the glue set. Congratulations, you've completed assembling the two front panels and the mechanical components. And you can fade up the audio level of volume with little green lines on the audio tracks and things. So, that's it. I really must, and then I render it, and that takes a long time. And I reckon, whatever video I'm doing, it really does seem to equate to, it's about an hour of editing per minute of video at least. It does. It's the next day, and I've just spent last evening trying to get rid of this wretched thing. What are the chances of finding that you've got your wireless password and stuff displayed prominently next to your computer and you keep looking at it, and your software hasn't got the facility to blur anything out, so you have to fiddle and fart around? Anywho, very exciting stuff is occurring. Let's go and have a look. It's all systems go. We're cutting out 2mm um, gears, all the gears, for another 20 Nipnet Thrabwells. So that's nice. And I've got two or three projects on the go simultaneously. There's another lot of the um, spindles being 3D printed for the reciprocating chronometer. I'm doing well today, I'm remembering the names. And this is the really exciting things. This end, as you can see, I've reinstated the uh, pasting table. And this end is Nemnet Thrawellian times. So there's 20 of those cut out. I've got the glue done, I've got the polish done. These super glues just arrived this morning. I've started doing lots of wires. No, I just love it all. This is what, coincidentally, a hundred clock movements looks like. They arrive too. And these ones are for this end of the table, which is a little bit sadly empty at the moment. Um, I've cutting out five, I'm going to make five of the reciprocating chronometers to start with so I can see, send them out to people, um, see if there's any issues or anything before I go ahead and make lots of them. So five of them are the wretched turntable, which coincidentally, it was a really nice idea, takes three AAA batteries inside and has a little button on the side that you switch it on and off with and direction, but what it doesn't tell you, because it's hideous, is it eats up batteries when it's off. So you leave three AIA batteries in it, come back two days later and find they're completely flat. Isn't that stupid? And there's lovely big cutouts, 10 millimeter bits, five lots for the reciprocating chronometers. The excitement never ends. This has just arrived. The bearings for them and all these lovely switches. As you know, if you've watched videos in the past, I do like to do some repetitive mindless work sort of with a nice jig to help so i'm going to get on and do those serious about the reciprocating chronometer hcc beijing go look these arrived this morning as well a hundred of the little red spirit levels isn't that amazing i was so pleased to find you can still get them so a hundred of them so i'm hoping eventually to get through a hundred of them Thanks very much for watching, hope to see you next time. If you've liked this, please click the subscribe button, the bell and things like that.